Peter of the Rio Grande Guardian. We are live today with State Representative Bobby Guerra. Bobby, hi. How are you? <laughs> we got this. It's we getting got, hard to yeah, we got, learn we, this. We, we got to do the bump. You know? We got to do that. That's right. Reason being, obviously, this is a, a conversation about the coronavirus, and uh, the reason we asked if we could chat, have a conversation with Bobby, Representative Guerra, is. He's the only Valley member on the Texas House of Representatives Committee for Public Health, on public health. He's been a member of that committee for many, many years. Bobby, you've probably never seen anything like this. That committee, most important committee in Texas right now. Well, right now, but let me also make a, uh, um, just real quick correction, Steve. Um, my colleague, uh, Eddie Lucio III, He's on there too. is also on the committee. Fair enough. Um, I think he came on last session, but I've been on the committee since... For a long uh, time. For quite some time, since uh, 2012. Yes. And the purpose, when we started to talk about having a live stream with you, Bobby, is um, was at the end, actually last week, when you informed me that the Committee for Public Health was going to have a hearing about the coronavirus, uh, this Tuesday, which has just passed, and I thought this is going to be so important. We can learn from you, for the Valley audience, learn what you learned up in Austin. You had all the leading health officials at that hearing, and you could give us a, a, a great update on what's happening. And then, of course, things have moved so fast. This story is developing so fast that just er just a few hours ago, Governor Abbott had a a press conference and announced a number of measures. So probably there's more information out there now than what you learned on Tuesday. Well, that's very true. And I will say also about 10 minutes before the governor had his, um, his press conference on that issue, uh, he had a, he had a, uh, a conference call uh, with uh, numerous representatives throughout the state of Texas uh, to talk about this very issue and wanted to give us an update prior to his uh, his disaster declaration announcement uh, and wanted to give us the parameters about where we are right now and, and in different areas of the state. But I think the main thing that he drove home to us is that it's very, very important, and I agree with this wholeheartedly, is that um, people in Texas should not panic, uh, um, and we are doing our very, very best um, the state of Texas, I think, I think, um, is doing a fine job of making sure and driving that message home. We just need to be, um, we need to be cautious and, uh, we need to exercise, we need to exercise care with our families and our friends. Bobby, we're going to pause and double check that we are live. We may, are we live, Mr. Producer? Yes. We are live. Sorry. That's all right. Technology. No, I get it. Uh, if you remember back in many, many years ago, I was, I was in the news media before I went to law school. So you are very, therefore, you're very obliging and understanding of our situation. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Carry on, if you will. Well, no, I was just, uh, we, we had a conference call with the governor and he wanted to assure us that um, his office and state officials throughout the state um, are, are taking this seriously. And I uh, wanted to make sure that uh, um, we knew that. And basically the message to, uh, that he was going to portray or give to, to the community um, um, throughout Texas, through our communities throughout Texas, uh, as to why he was uh, declaring a, um, uh, at this time, a state of emergency, a, state of, a, state of, a declaration of, of, of emergency. And of course, that begs the question, what exactly does that mean? And I'm sure that was going to be your follow-up question. I was going to ask that. Yeah. Tell us, yes. if you will, tell us what a state of emergency or declaration of an emergency at the state level means. Well, basically, it gives the governor the flexibility uh, to not have to uh, get bogged down in, um, um, in, in moving our resources uh, throughout the state. Um, uh, much more freely without going through all of the red tape. Uh, I'm talking about uh, resources such as, uh, you know, medical issues, uh, um, emergency personnel, uh, testing, um, testing uh, capabilities so that he can have the flexibility to move these resources and money, not just money, but also resources throughout the rest of the state. 
And so if let, let's go back because I, I believe Tuesday's hearing was so in depth. You had so many uh, health officials there uh, giving you an update. Tell us what you learned at that hearing and then we'll, we'll contrast what, what the situation was Tuesday with that very in-depth hearing with what we've heard today from the governor. Well, at the hearing, we, in fact, as I have the agenda, please, that yeah. we, that we, um, uh, that we were given that, that day on Tuesday. And the first uh, witness we heard was from Dr. John Hellerstadt. He's the commissioner of Texas Department of State Health Services. Dr. Hellerstadt is, uh, is extremely intelligent man. I've worked with him on many issues before in the past. Uh, he takes things very seriously. And uh, it was very comforting to know that his, his department, um, as, best, as best can be, can be done, is on top of things. Um, and ex and we, were all, we also heard from witnesses about what exactly is coronavirus. Um, and show, show, show the viewers. Well, this was, this was one, of the, one, of the, one of the handouts that we were given um, to better explain to us what exactly coronavirus is um, and, and why it, it, it can be so dangerous. But again, I think the main message that was that was portrayed after listening to all of the witnesses, we even heard from the mayor of San Antonio, the county judge in Bear County, because we know there's been some issues over there and in other parts of the state. And the main thing is, is that it's important that the public not panic, um, that we, that, that the folks in Texas make sure uh, um, to focus on things that are important um, and, you know, <laughs> Try to, the best they can, stay away from large crowds. Um, make sure and wash your hands as often as you can with warm water, uh, soap and warm water. Um, they, they explained that many of these sprays and, and lotions that, that, that are out there that, that have uh, alcohol based to them, those, those are good, but they're not near as good as washing your hands uh, with soap and warm water because that actually gets into your pores. Um, and whereas the other the other products do not, but washing your hands is so so important. And and again, we have to be very very careful. I think these days of, I think it's a good practice not not to not to adhere yourself to large crowds. Um, we're going to get through this, and and it's and it's and it's good to see that our state officials are on top of it, that our governor's on top of it, and the governor and the state officials wanted to make sure. And, and brief the state representatives throughout the state uh, where we are. Uh, and in this particular case, it was Public Health Committee. Did you, as a state representative, elected official at the state level, do you get briefed sort of um, privately by health officials in this case uh, with information that is not really for public consumption? And, and if that's the case, I would have to ask you, do you know more than the public? I mean, is there anything being kept or kept? Is the public not being informed of anything? If it's really uh, a very dangerous situation and, and there's concern about fear and panicking in the community, is there something you know that you know that the public doesn't know? Well, I can tell you, it's all full disclosure. It is. Yes, uh, and that's that is typically how things are run uh, in state government. It's full disclosure on uh, as far as my participation and no nothing's being held back it's a serious situation but at the same time it's important the public not panic about this and we take reasonable measures to protect ourselves and our families and uh, one of the good things that came out of this is that Dr. Hellestat made it very clear that it does not appear that young children um, um, seem to be affected by by this virus as older adults and that was very comforting to know uh, um, I know that I've spoken to many parents about that, and um, there's a sigh of relief when they hear that, but at the same time, they themselves could be exposed to it. So we need to take these precautionary steps. And uh, as we, we mentioned there, that it's not so much the young children, but the elderly population, we understand, is much more vulnerable. And just be, before we went on air today, we heard from a, um, a manager of um, an elderly center here, here in the Rio Grande Valley, and he said what's happening with those types of facilities is that only the essential staff are coming in and there's no visitation. So there's a, a lot of precautions happening with regard to 
old folks' homes, basically. Well, I think that's wise. Uh, all precautionary steps that can be taken um, to combat this situation in Texas are so, so important. And I'm so pleased to see that not just state officials and not just the state of Texas as a whole uh, uh, officials uh, and community officials are taking this seriously, so, are, so is our community. Uh, our, our schools, you know, we heard we heard from the Texas Education Agency as well on the COVID nineteen coronavirus uh, issue as 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 it is affecting or could affect um, our schools throughout the, throughout throughout Texas, and um, our, our our officials are taking it very 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 seriously. I want to also say this much, and one one of the issues that I did point out at the hearing um, prior to the hearing. Um, I had learned from McAllen ISD when all of this first broke, the week before, when all this first broke, uh, so proud of uh, McAllen ISD because McAllen ISD three years ago, from what I understand, um, wanted to do something about the, um, the attendance level, um, especially during flu season in, in McAllen schools. Why was that important? Because of state, uh, because of federal funding. Um, the schools were the school district was losing money, so they aggressively, McAllen ISD took on aggressively that issue, and now um, they are making sure that the that the children are washing their hands. I was it was explained to me that at some of these uh, elementary schools that the wash basins are outside of the bathrooms, and the teachers make sure that the children are washing their hands, but also very importantly, they're spraying down and cleansing the classrooms once a week, and it has just their, their attendance level has gone up uh, exponentially, and it's, it's really working. Those type of practices uh, dovetail, I think, with what uh, uh, precautionary steps that I think school districts throughout the state should, should consider. Uh, look at what McAllen ISD is doing. I was so proud to hear that. And um, um, they take uh, the healthcare of the, the students very seriously. And again, it had a lot to do with uh, the, uh, they were losing uh, attendance levels in, in many of the uh, schools, and, and I think they've, they've got a good handle on that. I'm very proud of McAllen ISD for that. Um, a subject that the public, general public, just if you know, just paying attention to everything that's been put out there, there's tremendous interest right now on testing, the opportunity for the public to, to be tested. And the, the criticism has been at the federal level that there just aren't enough tests available. People cannot test if they wanted to. Today, with the um, declaration from the governor, uh, Governor Abbott said that in San Antonio, there's going to be a drive-through testing opportunity in San Antonio. What can you tell us from what you learned at that, that hearing on Tuesday about the level of, of the amount of testing that's available in Texas? Well, I do know that it's going to be implemented um, um, Again, drive-by testing. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to get out of your vehicle. Um, uh, that, that's my understanding. And this is gonna be implemented, I think, in, in, in San Antonio. I think it's gonna begin. Um, and, and I think it's gonna be uh, probably adopted throughout the state of Texas in many communities. And I think that's very positive because people are very concerned about this. If you start getting snivels and, and, and cold-like symptoms, you wanna get tested. Make sure that you don't have uh, coronavirus uh, um, um, per se and 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 I think that's so so important because knowledge is everything uh, especially at a time like this um, I, this this data may be out of date by now but what I doing some research for the show here I had read that there were only 104 people in the whole of Texas a state of 28 million only 104 people have been tested so far for the virus that doesn't sound a lot well, I understand this from listening to the governor today. That's going to be that's going to be ramped up. Oh, big time, uh, big time, and that's that's recognized through our state officials and our governor. And I was very pleased to hear that. Uh, I really was. I also know that there's six. Uh, well, actually, there are ten facilities in Texas, um, but there's only six that can actually do the testing. Um, we have one facility in Harlingen. They currently um, they currently can. Um, um, do the test sample, forward on um, to a facility like in um, San Antonio, San Antonio. Uh, and then those results sent back to the facility and the patient as well. Okay. But my what's, understanding, what's the turnaround there? Um, just a matter of days. But I will say this much: that that um, that procedure 
is hopefully going to be adopted uh, with the rest of the facilities, like the one in Harlingen. Uh, my understanding is it's supposed to be adopted pretty soon, but we're not quite there yet. There's a, there's a big curve that's going on right now, but we in Texas are taking it very seriously. Let's move on to our hospitals. What you, as a member of the Public Health Committee, you hear a lot from hospitals. You have uh, great relations with them all. What are you hearing from hospital chiefs and ex top executives at our local hospitals here in the Valley as to what they're hoping for from the state uh, to ensure that they're just not flooded with, with well, patients? You know, my understanding is, is that uh, many of the medical facilities and hospitals throughout Texas um, and, and especially in certain areas, are uh, making sure that the only ones that are going to be admitted in, uh, that will be ad not admitted as a patient, but but allowed to go into the hospital, are going to be patients, and in, and in many cases only immediate family, in a, on a limited basis. Uh, folks in Texas are taking this very serious. Our healthcare community is taking this very serious. Our governor's taking it very serious. The state officials are taking this very serious. And I, I'm, I'm very proud of, of how this is being handled in Texas. We're get, we, you know, um, it's, it, it, we want to make sure that, that, that we don't have a huge uh, peak um, in coronavirus uh, detection. Um, and I think that we're, the state of Texas is, and many of our communities are taking uh, great steps to make sure that doesn't happen. I know that there have been festivals like South by Southwest was canceled. Um, I understand the Houston Rodeo uh, was, was canceled. Um, these are going to have to be issues, and I asked that question. Uh, South by Southwest has been canceled. What about, the, how's that going to be dealt with throughout the rest of the state? And right now, uh, that's going to be left up to the local officials to make those decisions because it's felt like the local officials can better, have a better handle on that and can make a more informed decision on that. Mm -hmm. Now, but there are some festivals that will continue. There are, and as we speak, um, the plans are in Mercedes to continue with the livestock and rodeo show. Uh, that's going ahead. They get a, you know, potentially 100,000. Yeah, the livestock show in Houston has been canceled. Yeah. So there's that dynamic. But I think in Houston, there's been many more cases, obviously. Uh, so the more dense area. Yeah, the, the more dense area. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I don't think that's the situation here in the Valley. But again, that could change. Mm -hmm. And so we just need to stay on top of it. Yeah, things are changing all the time. Uh, just prior to this show starting uh, over in Cameron County, the county judge, Eddie Trevino, held a press conference. And according to one of our colleagues in the media, uh, one of the reporters contacted us to say that there are four cases of the coronavirus in Cameron County, four tests, two have proved negative and two uh, the results are not at, not yet in. That's the first. So it's inconclusive that, at this point. Exactly. So so as far as we know, right now, and Eddie Trino, Judge Trino is a dear friend of mine, um, and and I've spoken about these things. Right now, there's there's no indication that there has been any positive text, test test um, uh, of any individual in Cameron County. But again, Cameron County is taking this serious. Mm -hmm. Let's. Um, make the subject let's broaden it to the international situation we we're on an international border here uh, some people are concerned that, that uh, people could cross uh, at our international bridges and have have the virus even though by all accounts uh, in mexico the cases are far lower there's far less international travel uh, into mexico than there is the united states and so there they in mexico they haven't had the cases uh, we hear that there's been a, there's a, there's a, a, maybe a spike in influenza in Monterey, but that has not been confirmed as the coronavirus. At your hearing on Tuesday, was there any discussion about the unique uh, circumstances we have on the border? And, and is, is there more of a danger with, 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 our, with the virus uh, coming in from the south? Well, uh, uh, that specifically was not addressed at the hearing. Um, um, but I will say that that's really going to have to be left up to the local officials, but mainly the federal government when we're dealing with ports of entry. And so I'm afraid the federal government would have to be the one that would, would, would have to address that situation. Now the communities, like the, 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 the city of Hidalgo, you know, and what steps they would take, I haven't heard anything, but I'm sure as things move along, 
um, that that uh, the city fathers and these border communities will take this serious and are watching it very closely. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Next question. Uh, what is the real number of people who are suspected to have had coronavirus in Texas? What is, what's the latest you've heard there? It keeps changing um, um, uh, day by day. And so I don't have the current number right now, but I will tell you is that it has been increasing. Okay. Um, don't want to make this political because anyone can catch that virus, Democrat, Republican, uh, obviously rich or poor. But what do you think so far from the response from the White House, from the federal government, either from Congress or the White House on, on, on this issue? Well, my understanding, well, from the best that I can see, there's been, there's been some confusion um, uh, from the White House on this issue. That's no secret. Uh, folks are talking about that. Um, other federal officials have been, quite frankly, have been on the same page. Um, but I can't speak for the White House. Um, I just know that there's been some concern that um, uh, the, the, I guess the level of, of um, immediacy, so to speak. Um, urgency. Urgency uh, uh, um, at the beginning of all of this. I think that's beginning to change. If it hasn't already, it appears it has. Um, but again, you'd have to, you'd have to uh, turn to White House officials to ask uh, more in depth about that. Do you think um, you go to Austin a lot? We've had the confirmation that in Travis County or Austin, there's been two confirmed cases. Uh, lots of state employees um, live and work in Austin. Should state employees be allowed to home, allowed to work from home? What are you hearing there as to what the agencies are doing? Well, the the, the actually. The day of the hearing, at the end of the hearing, um, my chief of staff told me that they had just been advised that um, that they were going to be uh, uh, employees at the Capitol were not to come back to the Capitol um, until uh, advised further. So those, those precautionary steps are being taken as well. Okay. And next one, next question. So bottom line is, yes. my chief of staff. Is not in her, and it's not in our capital office uh, today. Um, she's at home, uh, but she's available by phone, um, and um, I talk I talk to her uh, constantly, and she's uh, monitoring the situation um, uh, as best she can uh, in that in that situation. But she is not in the capital. None of the chiefs of staffs are in uh, in the in the capital right now. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard whether there's a, a shortage of doctors or, or medical resources? for our nursing homes that handle uh, the elderly, for example? Uh, not per se, I have, I do understand that there are situations because all nursing homes are different. They're all run different. They all have different administra administrators. Uh, my understanding is we don't have issues. You know, again, my focus is big, is in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, obviously, I, I concern myself with the nation and the state as a whole. But, um, but focusing on District 41 and really uh, nursing homes throughout the valley, um, I'm not hearing that there has been any real concern along that line. But I'm sure there, that all administrators are taking this very, very serious. I know all the hospital administrators are, and I'm sure the nursing home administrators are as well. Mm -hmm. um, what about the situation of paid sick leave? That seems to be gaining traction in Washington, that there should be some legislation to allow workers to be paid if they are sent home by employers or you know they you know furloughed etc that they that, that that sick pay should kick in uh, with new legislation well uh, again on a national level um, that's that's beyond my pay grade but I will tell you that um, each community in Texas has their own ordinances so to speak I know Austin has its own um, 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 San Antonio has its own, so that we're going to have to leave that up to each each um, each official, uh, each uh, city official, to make those those determinations. Let's bring it closer to home, although you. But I think it would take some state legislation as well. It might need that. Yeah, it might, but I, I right now I'm not here. That's not really a discussion right now. Let's get ahead of the game on the virus itself, and I think that's really where 
where we need to focus our energies and our concerns mm -hmm. is getting ahead and making sure that our communities are safe. As far as sick leave is concerned, I've heard some, some about that, but right now in the state of Texas, the governor, state officials like myself, we just wanna make sure that our communities are safe. Uh, spring break is about to start. That normally means the island, South Padre Island is just full of students from all over uh, the state and, and across the country even. Uh, what's your thoughts on saying, closing that down and saying no in the, uh, with an abundance of uh, caution that we should say, uh, please do not come. It, it's for your own good, it's, it's dangerous. And so many public events across the country are being, are being shelved, been canceled. Your thoughts on spring break on the island? Well, I think that South Padre Island, the city of South Padre Island, uh, uh, city fathers to make that determination. They're best. They're suited best to do that, and that's that's kind of my position on that. I will tell you that I have a couple of staffers uh, uh, who work for me uh, or work for the state through you know uh, uh, in my office, and they've told me they had planned to go. They're young, and they planned to go to some parts of spring break. They canceled those plans, but I think that's really something that each individual uh, needs needs to decide. Um, will it be affected? I'm sure. Are there going to be cancellations of some of these students going to the island? Most definitely. Would that be the wise thing to do? All I can say is, is um, I think uh, the, the advice has been um, so, uh, be careful with the socialization. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we had um, our, our own county judge, uh, Richard Cortez, today say he had listened to the governor, uh, he was on a conference call with all the county judges around the state and the advice he came out with today was that um, there shouldn't be any public gatherings of over a thousand people. Uh, that's obviously not the case with the livestock and radio show in Mercedes, that's going to draw a lot more than that. But, but in general, are you in agreement there? That well, that's... my advice to the public is avoid large gatherings um, and to the extent possible practice social distancing that to me is wise and um and that's what i'm advising my family to do that's what i'm advising my kids to do uh, they don't live here now they're you know way to college or um or have other um, um positions uh, uh, and jobs uh in the state i've got three children um i'm they, they usually use common sense i've told them i, I have told them think about this and they're old enough to make those decisions on their own, but I think they're making the right decisions. So um, perhaps t talk to the public here and, and your advice there for, for parents and, uh, and families as to whether they should be, what they should do in terms of going to events uh, that are gonna draw a large crowd. Counsel with your children, talk to them about these issues, make sure it's taken seriously and again, my advice is um, practice uh, social distancing, mm -hmm. um, I think would be a wise thing to do, and stay away from large gatherings. I've, I've said that before. I, I think that's wise advice, and I think it's sound advice. Um, that hearing has happened. You, you learned a lot on Tuesday. Going forward, how will you keep in touch? Will you get briefed regularly from, from the state leadership, from this, the emergency management teams as to what's happening. How do you plan to interact with what's happening in Austin and share it with your constituents? Well, obviously being part of the public health committee, I'm receiving updates um, um, all the time. Um, but I will say that um, the state representatives and state senators are getting updates um, throughout the state um, on a daily basis. And so I can't speak for everybody else, but I can tell you that my office is on top of it and uh, we're watching this very, very closely. And uh, again, I would advise folks, uh, be careful and um, wash your hands with warm uh, soap and water. Um, don't be touching a lot of people. I think we're doing, you know, you and I started out doing this. You will cheat um, doing at the that. hearing, that's what we were doing. Okay. Some of my dear friends and colleagues that I have served with for several years now, there was no abrazos or hugging <laughs> or shaking a lot of hands. There wasn't any of that. We were doing the bump. Uh, 
uh, because everybody's taking this serious. I, I, as you mentioned that, I was at a, a rather large hearing in FAR on, on what day was it? Just a couple of days ago. And I tried to do that with people I know well. And they, the look on their face, they were offended that there's no more abrazo and there's no more shaking of the hands. Well, I went into a restaurant the other day that I frequent quite a bit. And um, when I did, everybody got it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that, that the restaurants that I have been into, uh, I, I have frequented uh, since all this started, people get it, they understand it. Every once in a while you don't get something, some people don't understand, but when it's explained, they get it. And so it's just a matter of safety. It's a matter of being uh, proactive uh, with your health um, and advise your kids of the same. As you mentioned the restaurants, we've got to ask the, the economic question, all the signs are, it, a lot of noted economists are saying we're probably going to be nose diving into a recession because of this virus. Um, what do you think the state of Texas will do to to overcome that? The, the, what's the economic picture from this? Uh, well, Texas has always been very pro pro business, which I am pro business. Uh, Texans will overcome. I really believe that um, we Texans are very resilient, and uh, we're gonna. We're, I think. All of us uh, have the responsibility to, to take these precautions seriously, but at the same time, we must continue to live our lives. You came into my office today. Everybody's working today, but everybody's very conscious about what is going on out there. There's already been discussions about, are you going to the movies uh, this weekend? Folks in my office said, no way. So, you know, I, I hate to see that happen to our retail and to our businesses. But we have, to, we have to practice safety first and health, um, be very conscious of our health. And I think that's so, so important. And I think most owners of businesses understand that because they're, they're human beings too. They have families too. Um, it's a very difficult time. I can tell you that, that um, I've taken a big hit. Uh, my wife and I have taken a big hit um, on, on the stock market issue. Uh, I think many of us have. And, but it's not just the stock market, it's, it's, it's business, period. We're gonna get through this. The main thing is don't panic. The main thing is, is um, be informed and take precautionary steps. We're gonna get through this. We're a resilient state, we're a resilient nation. I really believe we're gonna get through this. There's no question in my mind, um, we really will. You've, you've mentioned that a number of times that we will get through this, but from everything you've heard from the um, briefings you're getting, is it the case that it's going to get worse before it gets better? It's going to get harder before it gets, before it For gets, sure. yes, there's no question. Um, Even in the valley? Well, I pray it does not happen here. Um, but again, we live in a global economy and South Texas is not isolated in and of itself. We do have highways that lead north of here. We have highways that lead south of here. We have uh, many aircraft flying in here uh, and people uh, are, are still moving about. Uh, I don't think quite as much as before. And, and again, it's just a matter of being wise and, and, and taking precautionary steps. Mm -hmm. We all have that responsibility, not just to ourselves, but to our fellow man and friends. Mm -hmm. Before we wrap it up, I want to ask my producer who's behind the camera today, uh, any further questions you would like her, like us to pitch to, to Bobby, to the state representative? Well, what can you say to make us feel good? Because I think there's a little bit of fear out there. What well, that's a good comment and uh, no question. There's a lot of anxiety. There's gonna continue to be anxiety. Uh, but again, the men and women um, um, of this state, um, we've always shown that we're resilient and um, we're gonna take this advice from our healthcare officials very seriously. And I, again, don't, uh, don't put aside the precautionary steps uh, that are being advised throughout the nation and the state of Texas, as far as um, your socialization, as far as uh, getting out into the community and taking precautionary steps such as washing your hands with warm soap and water, um, and human contact, if we've known it in the past. Um, but we're gonna get through this and things will get back to normal um, 
I feel very confident of that in, 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 the, in the near future. We just need to make sure that this situation does not peak any, any higher. And I think by, by taking the steps that we're taking in Texas, uh, we're, we're, we're on the road to making sure that happens. But again, it's changing day by day. And I have a feeling it's, it's gonna get worse and before it gets better. But um, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna get through this. Mm -hmm. Well, State Representative Bobby Garrett, thank you so much for the time you've given us today to give us an update on, on the coronavirus. Uh, you're a long-time member of the Public Health Committee. We couldn't have thought of anybody that we wanted to hear from more than you in this situation. Uh, you're getting briefed, as we've talked about. Every day. Every day from, from the state leadership, the emergency management folks. And uh, we appreciate the time. And um, please feel free to reach out to us if, if there's some important updates that you want to tell the community about. Oh, yes, indeed. And, and again, I'll be, I'm sure I'll be calling you uh, as we move along through this process with the updates that I'm getting from the state. Um, but again, don't panic. Take precautionary steps and um, go about your lives the best you can. Gentlemen, to close it out, please give me a chicken wing tap. <laughs> Thank you so much, Representative.